start by welcoming everyone to the Vermont Institute of Natural Science here in Quincy. We are a not-for-profit with a mission of motivating individuals and communities to care for the environment through education, research, and avian wildlife rehabilitation. And um, John gave you a little bit of background on the bird, but I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. Um, it was Christmas Eve when a female pileated woodpecker flew into the window of a home and the homeowners had heard the bird crash into the window, so they went out and found her in the snow, and they brought her in, um, and they thought maybe if she had a little bit of time to recuperate, uh, you know, she, she would gain her flight ability back and be able to be released. And they kept her for two days in their bathroom. And woodpeckers are not something you want around the woodwork of your home. So, uh, and they also have extremely large beaks. So she did a really nice job of redesigning the woodwork in their bathroom. Oh, and <laughs> they probably left it like that, remembering. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, after two days of that and, you know, realizing that she wasn't getting any better, she still couldn't fly, they thought, you know, now's the time. We, we need to get her medical help. And they had originally brought her to a rehabber up north closer to where they live. Um, but that rehabber did not have the proper facilities for a pileated woodpecker. And uh, that rehabber took the bird and then immediately uh, made arrangements to get the woodpecker to us. And facilities required for a woodpecker um, aren't extremely elaborate, but you basically need a deep, tall space um, woodpeckers need to cling to the side of things, whereas other birds we can put in like a small kennel cab, you would put a cat in um, with a little perch. Woodpeckers can't stand like that. They need to be clinging to the side of something. So when we first get woodpeckers in, we put them actually in a laundry hamper. <laughs> <laughs> and what we do is we put in um, a couple small logs and sticks so that the bird can cling and climb up them. Um, and we also put some fabric along the walls of the laundry hamper so she can climb up those as well. Um, but when the bird starts to get better, they need to be moved into a larger enclosure where you put, you know, full size six, seven, eight foot logs in, like almost actual trees, so that the woodpecker can really start to do her stuff and we can monitor her. So we got the bird in and uh, we found that she had a fracture in her left radius. Which and uh, we put a wing wrap on right away, and that just helped stabilize the bone and um, you know, allowed the fracture site to start to grow back together. And we left the wrap on for a couple weeks and took it off to assess the progress of the, the healing. And the bones were still a little bit wiggly, so we knew the bone hadn't fully healed together yet. So we rewrapped it again for another week. And um, after that week, we took the wrap off again, and the bone felt really firm and solid, so we felt confident about leaving the wrap off. Um, so she went back into her enclosure, um, and we actually upgraded her to a larger enclosure, put some suet in there for her. And uh, she was a funny woodpecker in that instead of eating the suet, she kind of played around in it, and she got very greasy. And, <laughs> and you could see it just visibly looking at her. She looked terribly greasy. Um, and greasy feathers for a bird, you know, does not make for good flight. So we had to start bathing her every other day in warm water and Dawn dish soap, which is a great grease cutter. <laughs> so we did that and we got her cleaned up. Her feathers looked, you know, in great condition. So that was when we uh, moved her to her final location, which was an outdoor enclosure with the very large logs that she could climb really high up into. Um, and she could also fly around in that enclosure. So we monitored her flight ability and we could see that the earlier fracture she had wasn't affecting her ability to fly. She looked great, eating a ton of food, and so after about a week outdoors, we knew she was ready to be released. So today's the day. <coughs> What's the comment about her beak? Um, her beak, when she first came in, was a little dull at the tip, and usually they have very pointed, sharp, sharp beaks. Mm. Um, and we're not really sure why that was. It, she could have been hammering on something um, metal a lot of times they go around um, the houses yeah or even at the bathtub <laughs> so she could have just dulled it up a little but it, it hasn't affected her ability to drill into the logs um so we you know we're just going to let that go so okay. yeah so she is ready to be released she's one of more than 400 birds that we receive uh every year last year i think we got in just over 420 birds and in, into our care so um, she will be returning to the wild today 
And if you guys have any questions, how or many, how what percentage of the birds that are given to you are able to be released back into the wild again? What percentage? Um, our release rate is about 50%, which is um, a really good that's release a, that's rate. A good rate. her, um, but she may dart right out of the box. She's pretty um, energetic. She wants out. Yeah, she does. Hey, pay attention, everyone. This could, this could go fast. Yeah. I know. Um, it goes, goes tripping over our heads. I don't know what they go. I guess. You guys stay there, don't. I hope it doesn't hit me in the head. I know. Nature Center in Queechee, Vermont proudly displays an impressive collection of live raptors, songbirds, and other animals for you to see up close. With 47 acres of diverse natural habitat, the Vins Nature Center offers a host of educational programs and special events enjoyable for people of all ages. For the latest information on the birds in our care, a list of our current Nature Center programs, outreach opportunities, and events, or to contribute to VINS so that we can continue our important work, please visit our website at vinsweb.org or call 802-359-5000 for more information. 